Unfortunately, some very important footage was lost when I accidentally deleted everything in my recently changed box or folder, or whatever you call it. For some reason, it deleted even the files that I had used to create a video. And some of the images that were lost was small ex sodium explosions taking place in the crucible. And it seems to me what happens is if sodium metal comes in contact with the positive terminal, I think it is, it explodes. Yeah, that's what it is. If sodium touched the positive terminal, it would blow up with a yellow flash. And I had some footage of that. That's some pretty neat stuff. But as I said, I lost it. And you're going to be seeing this, but unfortunately this did not work either. It was a very bad idea from the get-go. I would not have been able to remove this top from the crucible because the molten sodium hydroxide gets as hard as concrete. And also bear in mind that um, this electrolysis process puts off two gases, not just one like I thought in the beginning. It appears to be putting off oxygen and hydrogen, which generates an explosive mixture. Very explosive. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, this is a video log of some of the events that transpired during my attempt to produce sodium metal from a molten bath of sodium hydroxide. I know you can just buy sodium metal on the internet, but I wanted to see how easy it was to do this by using this process and come to find out it's a real pain in the ass. And I want to thank my friends at Nerd Rage for the comments that he left. He was uh, very enlightening as to some of his statements. And one of the things that he explained to me was that if you go above 10 Celsius of the melting point of sodium hydroxide, which is around 306 Celsius, I think, the sodium metal will actually dissolve in the molten sodium hydroxide. And I did, in fact, observe this taking place around 322 Celsius was the lowest I could keep the temperature. It's very hard to control the temperature because there's so many factors that cause the temperature to be what it is as far as your electrodes and the amperage and all that, the voltage and all that. I did manage to produce a pretty good little chunk of sodium, but um, I think I'm going to have to try a different process. One of the things you got to remember if you do decide to try this, one of the things that will happen is explosions will take place, just unpredictable and also predictable explosions. If you add sodium hydroxide to the bath while the process is taking place, an explosion will take place and be advised molten sodium hydroxide will burn right through eighth inch rubber chemical resistant gloves. You can see that right there and on my finger here. Burnt right through the dermis in two spots and through the gloves. So don't think that wearing big thick rubber gloves is going to help you. I did have uh, my whole body covered and all that. In the room. Okay, I got about $45 worth of parts right here. This is an electrolysis cell that generates sodium metal and hydrogen gas by electrolyzing a molten bath of sodium hydroxide, which is provided by Lowe's. I can't see this very well, but here's the power supply that I built to do this with. This is not the only thing I'll be using this for. Unfortunately, come to find out, 8.45 volts is not good at all for this. It's just getting it way too hot. What I got right here is the water-cooled secondary. This water bath right here is what does that. This here is a diode array. This has got four 25-amp diodes. And another thing that happened during my testing is I switched over to a different voltage. This transformer here runs at 28.8 volts and 18 volts. And it is rectified through this bridge diode array here, which consists of three 4-amp diodes. And I fried that instantly. It pulled so much amperage, they just smoked. You can see here where it melted the zip tight. I cut this loose to see if it fried all the diodes, but this entire diode array is fried. So if you're going to use high voltage on this test, be prepared to pull some extreme amperage. And the transformer itself also started to smoke nearly instantly. In other words, put some fuses on your diodes if you're going to do this. Don't be an idiot like me and fry your electronics. This here is the pump for the secondary. Sometimes I put ice water in that. And this is another shot of the diode array, the 100 amp diode array. I basically just got two terminal leads. All this stuff here is just some big bus bars that I use so I can take clamps and hook them on like that. It keeps everything cool. And, and that's about that.
does not produce sodium when it's black like that. Not sure what's going on. Or it does, it's not very well. You can see little sodium blobs forming. I can anyway. Run at about 4.7 amps, 8.45 volts. Let's see if I can refine this. I don't know if you can see that sodium in there, but big waste of time. Swag from the pot. Basically, it costs forty-five dollars to make that much sodium, so I'm gonna have to try the carbon way. This is the next reaction I'm gonna try. If anyone has any input on this, I'd definitely like to hear it. I'm not sure how well this is gonna go, seeing as how it uses carbon, and it also puts off carbon monoxide. I also figured out that the electrodes both put off a gas. I think one puts off oxygen and the other puts off hydrogen, but. Seeing as how the sole purpose of this was to see how much energy I can get out of this sodium. I don't know if you can see that. It's just flying around in there. Not burning as fast as I thought it would. Maybe it's low grade sodium. Huh. All right, enough of this. I'm doing it all. Huh, how disappointing. You can see the sodium hydroxide that it made. That sodium may have had a slight amount of sodium hydroxide dissolved in it because it was made at high temperature. So if anyone has any input on that possibility, let me know. You can see those shiny spots. That's where the sodium metal kind of soldered to the spoon. Don't use silver.